This video is being sponsored by the Textual Approach to Breaking into Cybersecurity eBook. If you're thinking about getting into cybersecurity, having trouble getting interviews, need LinkedIn help, need a career roadmap, or all the above, then this is the eBook for you. Sign up below to be notified when this book is dropping. The link will be in the description. Man, it got us looking bad, man. I'm gonna have to go back to the restream. All right, what's good, everybody, man? If y'all in here, please hit the like button, share this out. Um, still getting this new software situated. I don't know why it's gonna it's looking like this. It'll definitely be better the next time. But um, let me get the chat stuff or whatever. We can do it. You guys know we got day cyber walks right here. How's it going, guys? Let me see. All right, man. Honestly, I didn't even tire it. We didn't plan any talking points. He doesn't know, you know, what we're gonna talk about. And I don't know what we're gonna talk about. We're just gonna talk. We don't keep y'all here too long because it's Friday night and I like you know y'all out with y'all fam or whatever y'all doing at the crib. But um yeah, just uh if you wasn't in here early, I'm gonna play this promo and let it roll again, and then we're gonna be back with y'all shortly. This video is being sponsored by the textual approach to breaking into cybersecurity ebook. If you're thinking about getting into cybersecurity, having trouble getting interviews, need LinkedIn help, need a career roadmap, or all the above, then this is the ebook for you. Sign up below. To be notified when this book is dropping, the link will be in the description. All right, man. So, uh, first of all, you guys just started promo. My ebook is dropping soon. Sending out the copyright in the day. Sign up now because you don't want to miss it when it comes out. Uh, free game. Well, I can't say free because you know some of y'all gonna pay for it, but cheap game. That's what I like to say. Um, but we have you know the. Uh, the Jedi, he's really not even a Jedi apprentice no more uh, for y'all Star Wars fans. I ain't that much into Star Wars, but I do know a little bit. But uh, we got Day Cyberwatch right here, man. He's been killing it. And I thought it was only feel, fitting for us to kind of end this year, kind of how we started la this year. I was going to say last year, but it's not yeah. 2022 yet. Uh, for y'all that don't know, we did like our first live stream this January. Uh, and we also had that on a uh, podcast. So also, guys, if you're listening right now on the podcast, make sure you share it out. Uh, like I said, if you just came in, make sure you hit the like button. But uh, first of all, you've been in Vegas, what, the last, what, two, three days? Uh, I, I was in Vegas in uh, – I went, I went on Sunday, so today's today Friday, so last, like, five days. Got you, man. Uh, tell us a little bit about that experience. Yeah, so um, I so it was for the AWS reInvent conference. So it's like a yearly conference that AWS has for um, like the cloud security services, not just cloud security, but generally like the cloud space. Um, so actually, it was I got in through a grant that AWS had. So it's called the All Builders Grant. So essentially, uh, you had to like apply for the grant. So pretty much, um, just like a general application. Just think about like if you're applying for like a scholarship or something like that, or for like a program or something like that. Um, uh, so I had to apply for it, the program, and um, um, uh, I got accepted into the program. So um, I got the grant, and pretty much what AWS did was they sponsored um, a trip to the event. So essentially, the the tickets are like eighteen hundred dollars. So um, I didn't have to pay for the tickets. Um, they sponsored, they paid for the hotel for my stay all through. They paid for the flight. They paid for um, transportation, um, like Uber from like the air airport to the hotel and everything. And um yeah, so pretty much sponsored the event and like um had just, like a special 
um, a group for we that were the applicants for this program as part of the event. And then the event is essentially just think about anything related to cloud and AWS also. So like all of like, you know, services like robotics, um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud security, cloud infrastructure, um, AWS partners. Um, and all of that stuff. So everything that you can think about about cloud and it also in relation to AWS was in that event. And um, it was just, it was really amazing. Um, I got to like attend like several sessions like from um, like cloud, cloud infrastructure, cloud security. I mostly focused on like cloud security uh, events. So I got to attend like a bunch of cloud security events and everything, but in, in, in all, it was, it was a really amazing experience. And um, you can check my channel out. I have a vlog for the last four days, just covering like everything I did uh, throughout the, the, the uh, event. Oh shoot, I think we I lost your sound. I forgot. Okay. I tried to mute when Peg was talking because background noise with the laptop and all that crap. But um I was saying I want to go to a conference again because the last one I went to was 2019 to SpunkConf. Mm -hmm. So I was telling my I pitched it to my manager today. I was like, uh, because they only had two sponsors they did. Uh, they sent two people. He said they didn't even interact with each other. And then one of our guys, he actually was still working the whole week. Well, I guess he was. He was on meetings and stuff, you know. But I was like, yeah, I would love to go back to Splunk Comp. It was uh, pretty cool. Um, what hotel did they have you in? Uh, I was at the Westin, but there were other hotels. Like, there was uh, Flamingo as well and, like, a bunch of other hotels. But I was at the Westin. Was, where was the conference at? It was in Vegas, so. Uh, like no, I know where Vegas, but I meant. Like the venue, uh, it was so it was spread across like three hotels. So it was one is one was at um the Venetian, um, one was at um Caesars Forum, and one was at uh Wynn. Got you. There we go. I'm trying to figure out all this this crap out, y'all. Don't be laughing at me. Cool, man. Um, uh, so like, let me freaking mute all this crap. Uh, I don't know if you guys see my Pixel 6. I got a Pixel 6. On top of, I got a uh, iPhone. Sorry about that, guys. But early in January, if I'm not mistaken, were you still interning? Yes, I, I, I was still an intern, intern until March this year. Got you. Uh, tell us a little bit about, we'll go from your journey. We'll go from like, and you don't have to get super in depth, but kind of like what you thought cybersecurity was in the beginning to kind of not even what you thought cybersecurity was, because that's too big of a statement. Yeah. We'll say what you think your your first couple of cybersecurity jobs would be like in your mind compared to what you actually do now. Like, I think that's going to be an eye opener because you're fresh mm -hmm. and, you know, a lot of people uh, kind of want to know what that is. Like, and they kind of don't want to hear from people who have been they want to hear from us, but Somebody's new and give them kind of a little bit more, a better viewpoint on you know what they're getting at. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, like as I'm as I like as I March and between March and uh, between February and March, I wasn't like looking into like getting like any full time jobs. I was like still looking at like internships. So I was like applying for internships, interviewing for internships. And uh, what happened was like we we had had a conversation like you and I. And you're like, oh, you could, you could like, you know, apply for like full time positions. Like, you know, you have the experience, like just, you know, you could you know, apply and just see what happens. And I was like, yeah, for sure. So I alongside applying for internships and I started applying for full time positions and I happened to interview for my first like suck analyst position. And when I interviewed for that, um, like I was it was a pretty good interview experience. And like to my surprise, I was able to kind of like under, like answer like most of the questions and just really flow very well throughout the interview. And um, so I eventually got that job. And to be honest, I, I didn't really know what exactly I was going to expect going into like a full-time job or going into like being like a full-time stock analyst coming from like a cybersecurity analyst internship. So um, starting that position, like it was, it was really like, everything was really new to me. Like, I mean, I had messed around, I had, like messed around with Sims or like other tools in my home lab. But actually working with those things like in, in real life or like in an in a enterprise environment, like actually, you know, monitoring for different kind of alerts or like looking at different kind of attacks like in real life was a lot different from like what I was 
uh, experience with or what I had knowledge of and, um, from my um, like my labs or whatever. So that was like, you know, a whole different like perspective for me just coming from an internship where I was doing, you know, I was I was doing something completely different. So like in my internship, I was mostly like focused on like um, phishing analysis and like email security um, um, and like uh, Azure security. So like going into like working working with Sims and like uh, working with um, EDRs and like all of that stuff, like was a whole different thing. And um, if when I, even when I was about to leave, like my manager at my internship was like, look, like once you get into this position, everything is just going to be like so foreign to you. But like, you know, over time, like you're, you're going to catch, you're going to catch up, you know, just like if you just keep up at, at this pace. And for me, since I knew that I, I had such a, 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 a steep learning curve, I, I made it a point of duty to kind of like, um work towards really understanding all those things like really in depth so once i got my once i got into like the soccer analyst position i just made it upon a duty to like just really get good at it and understand everything i was doing um as fast as i could uh, so that i could get up to speed so i, I, w I wouldn't you know lack in you know what i was doing so it was definitely a whole different you know a whole nother uh, perspective for me and then once i already got into the groove of it um like I, I was ready, like, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm into this now. So I realized that I, I was no longer going to be able to go back into doing internships because now I'm like a full-time worker. And like, I, I'm now, I'm pretty much for now responsible for all of my actions. Not like when I was in the internship where I could, you know, I, I was still like in training or like, I wasn't like a full employee. So I knew that I always had to like, you know, continue, continue learning and continue you know, building my skills. And then from there, you know, um, after that job, I was able to, you know, get my current position and, you know, uh, we can talk about that um, uh, later on in the video. But, yeah, that's kind of how things, you know, kind of transitioned for me from internship to full time. Yo, man, that's dope, man. Let me let me give my boy some gunshot. Y'all some stuff that, like I said, when you came here earlier, we did not rehearse any of this stuff. So he doesn't know what I'm going to say. Listen, man. This is my guy right here. You're in my ebook. I probably highlight every time I highlight like a, a individual who uh, did something the right way and put in the work. I always talk about this guy. Like last year, it probably was times where I'm trying to see what's that. Yeah, yeah. So I would say it was like 2020. It'll be times like it was late at night, and I'm saying, "Oh, what you what you doing?" Uh, he was like, oh, I'm doing X, Y, Z. Or he's up late night studying or, or doing something. So everything he got now, he put in a lot of work for it. Um, I told him because he's younger than me. How, hold on, by the way, let, how old are you again? I'm 19. <laughs> Listen, man, I was not I was not this wise at 19. You know, I'm, I'm 10 years his senior. So when I see I rock with it, and I told him before a long time ago, I've actually told Tavion this like verbatim. I was like, this dude. Uh, because he was the same way, like younger than me, but really putting that work in. But if I'm not mistaken, did you start when uh when I was on uh PTO? Uh no, no, we I started uh I started we I was like my first day, like I remember we talked on my first day, we, like at least for my first week. Um we still we we talked, I shadowed you a, a bit in my first week. I think I did. When did you start? Uh, July, July 28th, I think. Yeah, July 28th. Okay, yeah. So remember, I did go on PTO. I went on PTO yeah. like two weeks in August. Yeah. So, but yeah, man. Uh, nothing but compliments. Like when I, a coworker's like, we need about three more days um, because I found out and I understand why companies do ageism a little bit. I think it's really contingent on the person and you might could tell through the interview or how the person is, but it's, I found out like the younger people were hungry. And some of the people who are sitting their ways aren't as hungry or they don't have the aptitude to learn as much. Uh, so that's what I see with you. And I mean, you could tell me what, what do you get from like being around like some of the older people? Like, are they actually trying or I want to say trying, but you know, how like 
I got the feeling, you know, I can say it now because I'm not on the team and you don't have to say no, you can plead the fifth. Sometimes I felt like people was just there. Uh, I didn't feel like they was giving it their all. And I felt like stuff, like even small tasks that I did, like I kind of was starting to get like pissed off with because um, I felt like I shouldn't have had to do that. Uh, I felt like a lot of these people were getting paid a lot of good money to work there and they wasn't, you know, doing what they were supposed to. And primarily it was because, you know, shout out, you know, if Ashley tuned in, shout out to Ashley. Ashley's like the best manager I ever had. You know, I think a lot of those guys just took her kindness, you know, I want to say for weakness. I think it was just because like she was so nice and understanding the, the nurturing part of women, what makes women, you know, good managers is that part. But it's not necessarily a bad thing, but what makes them kind of bad is like men know that men not going to play too many games. Like, that's yeah. one of the reasons why I kind of didn't want to get her position. I didn't want to uh, be over that team. I didn't want to deal with some of the personalities because I also think it's hard. Like, everybody, like, even when I was the lead, I'm, they didn't report to me. So think about all of us being on the same team. Now, all of a sudden, they have to listen to me. A lot of times, that doesn't even work well. It's like, I'm not going to listen to you. You just was doing the same thing I was doing. So a lot of times, that don't even work well. And it's a, it's like doing like this. Mm-hmm. So that's the one of the things that I, I didn't do or care for. But um, do you – or what? Yeah, so I feel like um, – so I, I, I've, I'm everywhere I've, I find myself, I've always been, like, the youngest on the team. And like everyone else has always been older and they always had more ex- experience usually. And for me, like I have like such a um like a really um a really strong passion for for cybersecurity and like for like my job wherever I find myself. And I really like immerse myself into it, which really helps me succeed. But um at the same time, like I I um I was like at my internship, like I I really loved working on my team, right? Because these people were truly passionate about what they were doing. And like, it's like, it's, it's you know, like, we're like, we worked together as a team and we also like, um like we could, we, we would share stuff with each other. Like, Oh, I don't understand this. You know, we explain to each other or especially being an intern. Like I was able to like learn a lot from them just because everyone really liked what we were doing and we were always willing to help. Um, but um, like here um, it definitely is a great experience, right? I feel like everyone, everyone is competent. Everyone knows what they're doing, but like, I don't have like that same, um, uh, the same vibes, right? I, I feel like, and especially in security, I feel like one of the one of the most driving things are is, is passion, right? Like you 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 have to, like you like something so much to the point where, you know, you're doing it as a job. For me, I'm, it's it's a job, and I also do it as, outside of work because I, I find it really fun. And it's like when you're in a place where sometimes it feels like um people are just you know there to like just you know get a paycheck. Um, it definitely like is. I wouldn't say for me, it doesn't kill my morale because like I already, I enjoy my job enough to like find, you know, pleasure in it. Um, but definitely it would, it would, you know, definitely having that, um, I guess con um, is you know, definitely something that I think about and, and I notice, uh, but it doesn't really bother me because I know that, you know, like the better I become like the, and the further I go in my career, the more it's going to enable me meet more people who are, who have those characteristics of like being, really passionate about this stuff you know beyond work and also in work as well so that's 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 you know that's my own take on that but yeah man um that's how i take it I, I, it's always fun being the uh the young guy because i think a lot of times people take it for granted but every time yeah. I, a young person who actually cares come in they typically do good because, you know, let's face it, we don't have the complexion for the protection. Um, so you have to come in and work hard, two, three times harder sometimes. But let's talk about, okay, like, so we I mean, been on social media for a while. I don't know when your hiatus started, but it's a lot of funny stuff that's transpired. But so in your honest opinion, because this should be a good time step. In your honest opinion, for someone to come in and be a level one SOC analyst, and we may differentiate between an MSS and a, a MSSP, but mm-hmm. for 
someone to come in and be a level one side, what would be the route you would advise them to advise them to do? And I want to, I guess you can say a little bit of your route, but I put like what you advise them, but from your viewpoint of doing this almost a year now, okay. pretty much at two companies and also finna be on a second contract within X amount of months. What do you think they need? Like, uh, because, you know, I say kind of what they should do, but now your person removed from being the person asking, hey, I'm trying to get in cybersecurity. What should I do? So you're a testament of the things that I talk about. So tell the viewer what you think they should do. Uh, and granted, it's different. You can get in different cybersecurity roles. But for some reason, a lot of people want to do the SOC, not knowing that, honestly, a, a SOC comes with a wealth of knowledge that it kind of expects you to have about different things. Mm -hmm. But we're going to ask Day, what does he think that, you know, people need to be successful in a SOC? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll kind of give, I'll give a brief summary of my own route and then I'll kind of tell you what I would do differently. Cause I, I feel like if I was to go over again, I would do it completely differently. And when I tell people now, I, I give them a different like perspective. So um, I, I, I started, so I, when I knew I wanted to get into cybersecurity, I was like, okay, um, I can either get in through like IT or like through an internship, right? I was like, okay, these are, these are two routes I want to start with. So I was like, okay, I, I would look for help desk jobs or like uh, cybersecurity internships or IT in internships. And I started applying for, so what I did first was I was like, okay, I, I want to get at least a baseline certification just to, um, kind of show like, you know, okay, I'm, I'm working on something. I'm learning new things. Cause pr truly I, I, like I barely knew much about like I knew I knew I understood tech I understood like information technology but I just I I didn't I didn't know well enough for I guess entry level positions and stuff like that so I was like okay I'm gonna get the A plus right um and when I get the A plus I'll, I'll start applying for for IT positions um entry level positions so I got the A plus I started for the A plus got the A plus I started applying for entry level like IT positions and like um cybersecurity internships. Um, and then just kind of um, then I started like, you know, trying to learn a little bit more about security. But I also knew that I had to have a knowledge of networking. So I started studying for Network Plus. So fortunately, between the time after I got my A plus and when I started studying for my Network Plus, I was able to get my internship. Right. So and this came through. So I'd say number one thing like for internship is like you, you have to be in school. You have to be in college. Right. So that was the first thing. Right. So I was in college. I, I was a freshman at the time. And so I applied for an internship and. I got the interview, right? So that's great. So I had the I had the certification, I had the college um, experience. I got the interview. I started working on like cybersecurity projects too. So I put that on my, my resume, I think. Or I, I talked about it in an interview, not on my resume. So I was able to get an interview, right? So now when I had the interview, I was like, okay, I have to kill this interview. I have to um, give these people a reason for them to hire me. So, you know, when we, when we had the interview, I made sure to like, you know, pretty much like, put all my cards on the table. This is me. Um, this is what I know. This is, this is what I, I, I uh, this is a passion of mine. And I really, I really appreciate, I really appreciate this opportunity to learn more about cybersecurity. And I was able to do that. Um, and I eventually got the internship. So now I can say, I can say that even though like, you know, A plus is not a security uh, certification, but it's still, uh, it, it's still a certification uh, regardless. Right. And then I got the internship. Um, I, I, I sort once I got the internship, I passed my network plus and then I, I, I took the security plus. So, um, that was kind of how I got into, you know, the field as I, I broke into the field. And then from there on, uh, I transitioned into becoming a SOC analyst. And between that time, I started building skills and learning about Sims and like different things like that. Um, that's kind of how I, I, you know, I got into the field, like just getting into the field, like with my internship. But if, if I was to do it, all over again, right? This is this is what I usually advise people, right? So you, you have to kind of know where you are at right now. Like what is your, what is your knowledge base? What do you what do you know at this moment? Like what do you understand? Like do you understand networking? Do you understand like basic IT stuff? Um I think having like a solid fundamental, having a solid um baseline, a solid foundation is like really important. And I, f I think a lot of people overlook that and just kind of go from like zero and want to go to like 90 in in a span of like a really short time you have to spend time learning the fundamentals because you're always going to come across the fundamentals like everything we do in cybersecurity still boils them back to the fundamentals and, and if you have a solid fundamental you can then build off of that towards everything else so i would usually recommend that people <laughs> so i would usually yeah but this is something us 
senior level people have been telling people on Twitter about doing the and you're one year in and just said the same thing that you have not guys. I wouldn't be able to tag him on Twitter because he's not on Twitter right now. He just said the same thing that we've been telling y'all about skipping steps of just knowing the fundamentals. So it's important, but I'm gonna let you carry on. Yeah, so absolutely. So the fundamentals are important. So I, you have to first self-evaluate. So when I evaluated myself, I was like, okay, I need to do the A plus, right? The A plus is people usually determine it as always oh, entry level is too low level. Like you don't really need the knowledge of the A plus, but like, like no other certification really even teach, teaches you certain things that the A plus teaches you, and having that knowledge is gonna help you. So I don't necessarily recommend doing the A plus, but just taking a course on it, literally just taking Professor Messer's course, right? You can literally finish that course in a week or two. You have the fundamental knowledge. That's all you need. You don't have to have the certification to prove that you have the knowledge. All you need is that fundamental knowledge, right? Take the A+. plus. Now, the second certification that a lot of people always usually skip over, which I recommend, is the Network Plus. Everything that is in cybersecurity boils down to networking. Like, cybersecurity cannot be anything without networking. Like, everything we do in cybersecurity is surrounded by networking. We need networks to connect our different devices. We need networks to, like communicate with the different devices networking is like the is which all the network information is what you get on your sim from your firewalls from your hosts from all your devices everything is based on networking so if you don't have a fundamental understanding of networking like you're going to really struggle in cybersecurity because like you're going to be having to deal with like different networking protocols or different networking concepts that you have to understand so i usually recommend people studying for the network plus right don't have to like you also necessarily have to take the certification right all you just need to do is to understand the concepts provided in the network plus right so study for the network plus understand the concept you can take the certification if you want but just understanding the concepts in the network plus is going to be enough for you to get that baseline of fundamental understanding of networking now if you want to go you know further you want to you know go further beyond just like network plus knowledge ccn is also another one you can go for that but that's that's if you want to if you have the time the resources and the energy to go beyond the uh, network plus um level of knowledge so i think one of the reasons why i i i, I eventually decided not to do, do the ccna was, was because i already did a ccna class i already studied for the ccna, the CCNA exam and i already had the the fundamental like network plus knowledge and i already had a job so i was like it would be kind of counter counterintuitive for me to take the exam now like if it, I, I might pass, I might I might not pass, but like it, it would just be it wouldn't be a, a good use of my time and like my resources to take the CCNA at this point in my career. I can only like try to like move forward based on where I'm at. But if you are at that point in your career, this is if you want to take the CCNA, then you know absolutely like it's your own prerogative. And it also CCNA also puts you in a better um a better position for some kind of entry level jobs, right? So we've got it now A plus, never plus that fundamental knowledge of basics of it and networking you, you you have that down right now you you're you're not starting to connect the the pieces together with the security knowledge so people usually recommend the security plus right and of course like it's the stable certification for like entry level like cybersecurity positions entry level um most cybersecurity positions you will see have the security plus as a requirement and also for like the dod requirements but i, I personally would recommend before or after taking the security plus to do either the EJPT, which is the Inland Security Junior Pen Tester, or the Blue Team Level 1. Now, the, the reason behind the EJPT is because, like, the Security Plus is great. It, it covers a really large amount of things. But I think the EJPT um, is, like, it gives you the perspective of the kind of attacks you're going to be seeing when you are when you eventually get into that event, uh, security position. Like, the different kinds of, like, things you're going to be analyzing from the sim, you have the understanding of how they work from the attacker's perspective, at least at a, a baseline level. So understanding that knowledge from the EJPT perspective is going to help you when you eventually see those things from the logs or from the sims when you're analyzing them. So I, I recommend the EJPT. Or you could do the Blue Team Level 1, which I'm currently studying for. Um, that certification is a certification. It's like the, um, people call it like the OSCP of the Blue Team side. So what a certification does is it, it it's pretty much the, it's pretty much, Security plus, CYSA plus, and a whole lot more in one certification, right? So this certification covers everything from like basic security fundamentals to 
uh, threat intelligence, digital forensics, SIM, incident response, and all of the things you need, you pretty much need to become a SOC analyst are covered in this certification. This particular blue team level one, like if you take the certification, I can I can personally say that if somebody has a certification, they've taken the exam, you have the skills and the knowledge you need to become a SOC analyst because this certification is a it's a it's a it's a practical certification. So it's not multiple choice like CompTIA or uh, any of the other certifications. You have to go through a 12 hour incident response scenario and create a report um, within 24 hours, right? Like the OSCP. So you have to create a report, go through a live incident response scenario and you know, go through that whole situation. So if you can do that, you can definitely work in a security environment or a SOC. So I recommend that. And then you can go ahead to do like a security plus or a CYC plus. Um, although the blue team level one might not give you the HR clout, having the knowledge plus the security plus certification to have the HR requirement combined together will, you know, help you bolster your, 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 your efforts, like in your, uh, when you're applying for jobs or applying for internships. So, and all of this, the A plus, number plus, security plus, blue team level one, EJPT, all of that, if you uh, properly plan your time, you can do that within a month. Uh, sorry, within six months, within six months. So if you plan a six month time period for all of these different trainings, you can definitely get that done. And another thing I also recommend is while, while you're doing this, you, you can't just do this without um, letting people know that you're doing this because you, you, your, your end goal is to get a job. So you, you have to let people know your intention. So share it on your social media, share it on your LinkedIn, on your Twitter, if you have one, because Twitter is a great place for this cybersecurity community. So share it on your Twitter, share it on your LinkedIn, have a blog or a, or a YouTube channel where you're sharing your knowledge um, to show people what you're learning, what you know, like go through um, go through labs, right? If you're, as you're learning these things, go through like, go to Let's Defend, learn how to work cases like you would in, in a SOC environment or, you know, like go to Try Hack Me. Try Hack Me has rooms on like Splunk on like different tools like that. So you have, and you can do like write-ups or like videos of what you've done of what you've learned or you can do projects, you can do like home labs just to show that you are really interested in this and like share it to your network. And when people see that, people see your passion generally, you start making connections with people that, can eventually, you know, kind of help you get into where you want to, which was like kind of how I kind of connected with um with Henri because like we, he saw what I was doing and like he was like, oh, this guy really has a passion for what he, what he's doing, and he connected with me with he connected with me with different opportunities and eventually my current opportunity. So like having all of those things and letting people see that is also going to be really important. You need visibility as alongside everything else you're doing. So that's what I would advise. Like within your first six months, if you follow that plan you know, to the T, like, just like block out all the distractions and just follow it. I, I can guarantee that you, with the right, you know, resume, with the right connections, you can definitely get your first entry-level internship or suck analyst or entry-level position in, in cybersecurity. And uh, let me give you a round of applause for that because that was, that was, that was, you said something like this. But yeah, man, everything he said, and I also like to add. I remember you were talking about that blue team level one. Uh, since it's not really heavily notarized right now, I'll throw that in there with, and I haven't had a chance to review that, but uh, maybe that. And um, if you didn't want to go to EJPT route, I also probably say the ECIR uh, oh, yeah, would be a good cert to get to because it's practical as well. And honestly, art who do interview entry level people or mid level or even seniors. We're not caring too much about what your certs. Like, for example, I don't know all the domains that the blue team level one covers or like the topics, but if you feel good about the topics you learned, and this is why I stress, I've stressed it to some clients, like the importance of labbing is to retain the information. Information and shout out to Dewan Life who at lab every day, you'll remember it. And so, yeah, you may not have that security plus or that CYSA plus or whatever cert, but let's say you did, you know, 10 hours of incident response work well enough to be at least on an entry level of talking about it in an interview. It's like a skill. That's, that's what I tell people to do. I say um, a lot of times some people don't have the experience. So I say, okay, cool. Sometimes I suggested, you know, a cyber course because it covers enough topics to where I could say, okay, this is related coursework. These are the different courses that they did and they should have, understanding of what it takes to secure an environment but i also agree with you about knowing the other side it's like i'm gonna use a boxing analogy like yeah i can show you defense all day but you gotta know how to throw a jab so you can also know how to counter it you can slip it you can block it it's uh, pretty much you know you go up under it it's different things you can do 
So I agree with you about knowing both sides in order to be well vested, which is why uh, this book is I'm finally done with it. I plan to probably try try hack me and, and some other things to stay sharp and you know that different viewpoint because I'm you know we'll we'll talk some more about everything else, but knowing that and putting it together. And like you said, the that six month plan. I think you did. You probably went under six months, right? Oh yeah, I I got in within like I think like three months, like within like after with the A plus, I was like on my first internship. Like everything they said is what I tell people. So and it's also stuff in my book. Like tell people to blog or start a youtube channel or if you don't even want to do a youtube channel you could just do screen recordings uh Mm -hmm. i just downloaded camtasia but you don't need camtasia i used to use screencast on matic you can use obs you can use anything you want to use but if you talked over it and explaining what you're doing while you're working through it you know that looks good to somebody you're you know you're across yeah you don't have experience but so here's a gem if you go on my channel right now i have that incident response uh walkthrough lab from INE. And I think they had the same one on uh, either try hack me, yeah, or and, whatever um, cyber with the too. boss of the socks, yeah. yeah. So I that's like an hour long video, and I'm talking through what I'm looking for and what's the next phase and all that. And I've sent that when I was doing the job search, I was sending that to recruiters, so they know. Okay, boom, he said, "No, you Splunk," so he's using Splunk in this. He knows how to investigate. You know, I'm actually showing it because I'm doing it on video, and I'm confident when I'm talking about it. If you can do stuff like that. You can mitigate, you know, your experience because that's also a thing. Everybody's so relying on, oh, I've been applying, but I ain't hear nothing back. I was like, well, did you reach out to them? You know, um, you have to get your foot in the door before people actually just start reaching out to you. Once you make a name for yourself and you get the experience uh, on LinkedIn and you've been on there a while, um, you're not going to get too many hit ups like you know my these i, I get emails sometimes at like 9 30 at night about roles like for real no lie uh and you know like it's been days when it's like nothing but uh, i'm talking about and you know good money like i'm not gonna get into a rant but that's how i know who's really in this and who's not like when you got the experience they find you you really don't have to apply anymore unless you it's something that just catch your eye and you want to apply to but even then and you can network so um, that's dope, man. Uh, so I remember we're going to do this. What's the challenge for somebody? Like, even though I just said, for example, and I think it's only because it's easier for me because I actually was using Splunk day to day using their lab yeah. for somebody, somebody coming out the street, right? And I only suggest to people, well, I think they changed it now, but I used to say at least do your fundamentals one because it's free and they'll give you a PDF. Yeah. So you'll have kind of commands to understand how to do anything. But how was it for you coming to Splunk from mm-hmm. what you're working with at the other job? Okay. So for me, uh, coming from, so I was working with a different sim, my other job. So coming into Splunk, I wouldn't say it was like it was. I wouldn't say it was foreign to me. So at least like I'd, I'd at least work with the sim, right? So I'd, I've been working with this different sim for like uh, about three or four months, and I've been doing. I also been I've been doing like some you know some labs like on Range Force, um, on how to use the sim, especially for like different investigation scenarios, and um, I'd also done the Splunk fundamentals one. I literally had built a whole Splunk lab, literally like built a whole Splunk lab. I connected like a whole uh, Active Directory environment into the Splunk, into into Splunk uh, for login and analysis. So I, I kind of understood, I kind of had a basic understanding of Splunk, right? I understood it from, like, I guess, from the engineering perspective and also from like the analytical perspective. So coming in, um, coming in and then being in an enterprise um, environment was a little different in the sense that now I had to learn the, I, mean, I had to know the index indexes. I had to know the source types. Um, and so having, knowing those two different, um, those indexes and source types because of the l- large amount of like data sources that are being fed into the, sp- into the sim, I had to know, cause like, okay, if I'm looking for like cloud logs, like what is going to be the index? What's going to be the source type? If I'm looking for 
um, for EDR logs. It was going to be the index for source type. I'm looking for firewall logs. It was going to be the index for source type. And even firewall logs, am I looking for maybe like network logs or like threat logs? Like I had to, I had to know like the different indexes and source types. But over time, I was able to kind of like you know figure that out and have that in my notes so I can easily refer back to them. But I would say it was it was completely foreign because I already had the the work experience from a different sim. And also, I'd already had like lab and experience using the tools. So all I needed to do was to learn it for the specific environment I was working in um, at the time when I joined uh, the organization. Um, but I, I've worked on, let me see, I've used Elastic a little bit. I've used Spunk heavily, QM Radar, and I've used McAfee's Nitro. Yeah. Um, and I've used ArcSight a little bit. Um, it's archaic, but anyways, <laughs> what I, what I tend to preach to people and you can tell me if I'm wrong or not, and then a sock, and maybe I should the title this, you know, what it's like being a sock analyst. Maybe that's what I'll clip it as when it comes to working in a sock, what do you think the most important things for a new person to do or get familiar with, or like. For example, you can wait on people to train you or what you can do is try to beef up your skills on your own so you're getting better faster so they can take the leash off you. Yeah. What would you advise? Like if it's a new person, it's their first. I know what I would tell them to do. If it's their first sock job, yeah. what would you advise them to do to kind of uh, acquiesce with the team? And um... Yeah. So, I mean, like, Working working with you was not it wasn't like my first sock job, but I still needed some 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 shadowing, right? Because it was a new environment. Uh, but I, I didn't I didn't shadow for too long. I didn't I only shadowed for like a week or two before like I was just working on my own. And like that was partly because like I was that was partly because I I I, I probably because you were not around, and also like I wasn't getting that much out from other like team members. So I just had to like you know figure it out my, by myself. But I'd say first things first is like um. You have to first of all like go go in with the mindset that you're going to be absorbing a lot of information within your first like month or first to three months, right? You're gonna be absorbing a lot of information about th about different things, especially if like an, especially since it's your first sub job, right? Because it's your first sub job, so you're gonna be you're gonna be uh, uh, you're gonna be um, uh, absorbing a lot of information. So you have to go in with that mindset. Now, secondly try to at least get like at least a week or something of shadowing right even if like if people if if people are not like taking the time because you can be in a, it can be in organizations where they're like oh yeah we'll teach you we'll, we'll if you show you but like nobody's creating the time like try as much as possible to like pursue people to you know make them like to shadow them for at least a week and during this your first week of shadowing people right make sure you're taking notes like a lot of notes like Literally, like if you can't type, like literally write down what you're learning, right? If someone says something you, you 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 if someone says something you don't understand, ask them or like note it down that you're gonna go research about this later on, right? So absorb all of that information, right? Ask questions, like learn as much as possible, right? So after you do this, then while you're shadowing, still ask the person, okay, can I can I walk through this so you can you can you can watch me as I do it so that if I make any mistakes, you can help me out with that. So once once you do that, they'll, they'll, they'll point out, oh, you're doing this wrong or you're supposed to do this differently, right? So try to uh, w allow them what you do, um, you know, work through an analysis or whatever scenario it is, right? And through all of this, make sure you're taking all, taking notes as much as possible. And then um, that's like, that's, that, should, that should be like your first, typically like you should have like, I would say you should have like normally in like a, in an organization, you should have like two, two to four weeks of like shadowing and training when you first get in, depending on your level. But if you're entry level and they know they should give you like two to four weeks of like shadowing. But if you're not getting like that, if you're not getting like that amount of shadowing, just make sure you're assimilating as much information as possible. Now, when once you once you um once you get like that in like your first one week, two weeks, or four weeks, right? So once you, once you, when you start doing your 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 uh, when you start doing your analysis. I feel like in in most like uh, uh, security uh, most source or like most like tools people use for like security um, alerting and stuff. There's ways where you can check how other people have gone through um, other alerts, like how they an analyze like their closing notes. So go back and look at how other people. If you're looking at an alert, for example, let's say uh, there's like a authentication from a, an IP address that has never been seen before, right? Go and look at how somebody else 
analyze that alert in in the in their notes and like okay this person did this i checked this i checked this i checked this i checked this and this is what i came to and you know, go through those steps in your own um uh in, in your own analysis and then based off of that uh start using like those person's steps to like you know backtrack and then figure it out and not just one person you can use like multiple people to you know do that like look at this person did this this way this person did this this way take notes and then use that to figure it out now if there's something specifically you don't understand try to reach out to certain people that like hey I'm, I'm going through this analysis can you help me out um like like can i share my screen while you walk me through how to go through this and then based off of that just like keep going and and, and very soon like you really just realize that even if even if there's something that is new you just know how to do it because like you already have that like muscle memory that's going to help you to understand what you're doing at that point in time yeah man so a few things you said a lot <laughs> the first thing is i'm gonna just let's say for instance talking about somebody's notes like it's um you can ask them but i was big on people like please put notes in here nobody would do notes and if i gotta do something you assign to me then i gotta figure out hey what did you do on this alert i don't know yeah. what you did i don't even know mm-hmm. how you came to this conclusion mm-hmm. number one number two like a new person come in and say oh this is how you do this yes but the thing is sometimes you have to now i say the hardest part is figuring looking at notes did it right that's true that's true <laughs> and so that that's one that's why i said when you said multiple people that's that's pretty good uh, because you'll get pretty much a good kind of understanding of what's right and wrong yeah i like to add that the reason why you didn't shadow is lunch because they so they was like, hey, he's good to go. <laughs> um, when it comes, guys, the biggest thing what I tell people is about being in a sock. And eventually, guys, I am probably even with that so I can actually set up something to help people. Like, I want to make a legit, like, sock course. Um, whereas I make it to where you finish, the, whether you finish a, you know, in a week or two months, you can go work at a sock the next day. So I, it's going to be concise and stuff that you, anything else, some of the stuff you won't need to depend on the socks because some of these things, it's good to know, but sometimes you ain't going to never get to use the stuff. Yeah. So I, you could go to work and be efficient. And then anything else they add is just extra. But right. the biggest thing is knowing how to think, um, and knowing how to uh, attack alerts. And guys, look, Google is your friend. Because a lot of times, John made a search where I looked in the at the correlation search, read what it's about, what was going on. Yeah, that's pivotal. Don't think you can't look something up because it's no way possible you for you to know all this stuff. Absolutely. Tag vectors, you know, are coming out all the time, and you know, you just have to figure out how to deal with them. Like, you know, I can go on and on. But for example, here's a here's a gym. Uh, a lot of people get throwing some virus total, and you know, if they don't come back with anything, oh, it must be it's, good. Yeah, um, that's not the case. It either yeah. be a good hash or just don't have information on it. Information. Yeah. If possible, try to run it through a couple of. Uh, open source engines to see if it's malicious or not. But sometimes even they might not know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could, what I tend to do is look at a hash or something that feels on an endpoint and I just look at the endpoint activity. Uh, before I left, I found uh, an alert with fileless malware. Uh, me and um, handled it. Uh, I looked at it in CrowdStrike and I was like, man, this looks interesting. This computer shouldn't do this. Because I seen something in Splunk. I seen something with a calculator function or something. I was like, why would a, they be reporting logging on the calculator thing? So it made me do a deep dive. Right. So be curious. Now, granted, depending on your level, you may not be granted that much time to actually do that and go deep dive. But when you actually do, that's how you actually get to understand better. And like he said, find somebody. Try to find the smartest person if possible, but do your due diligence so you're not bothering them. Like yeah. when I first started, I actually, I probably would go to John about everything, but I had already did X, Y, Z. Like the first thing John's going to say is, Hey, did you check the plan? 
Yeah. You know? And I was like, yeah, I checked the payroll. I did this and this. This is why I got this. Is why I got stuck here. He was like, okay, uh, sign to me. And then sometimes I say, hey, can you show me how you did that? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then and we look at it. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I I told the thing about how when I first started there, when it was like three years ago, I didn't even know what a you know S three bucket was. But we had those alerts coming in. A lot of us didn't know. Like that's how not long cloud's been around i don't know why these jobs are trying to make it seem like cloud been out here like 15 years like yeah. cloud is still fairly new so if you're watching this now you still have you know time to get into cloud but um uh, some good things now i'm going to talk about some of the, the things that are are small but can be some of the things that actually make you stand out without having to be super technical so everybody thinks yeah, cybersecurity, or especially being a SOC analyst, things. But I also would like to say that, honestly, soft skills, uh, speaking up in meetings, documentation is big. Not only notes, document your tickets correctly. Like, for example, you know, you have people that forget the host name or the source IP. When those are two of the biggest things that you need on the ticket. Right. Uh, tell them what you did, what was your analysis, why you can't make conclusion, what do we need to do in a ticket. So when you pass it to the next team, they don't have to go back over that. Exactly. Um, shoot, helping out with documentation, you know, with your playbooks, one of the right playbooks, understanding how to write correlation searches, uh, use cases. I mean, you name it. It's probably some other soft skills I'm not thinking of, but those are important things that will help you look better in front of leadership like i promise you if you work a night shift and you don't want to work night shift like just start emailing all the time come in and find some stuff that you can fix propose them so i should have said this when you start a new job what you need to do is get a one note or whatever you want to do type thing that you worked on or that you fixed you need to put it down so now when it comes to your editing your resume, you say, okay, I did this, 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 and this. Or when it comes to your review, if you're wanting to get a raise, you can say, hey, I did all this stuff. Um, it helped us out. You know, you're showing your value. Mm-hmm. So please do that. I'm doing that now. Like I've already put down, okay, I know what my major project is. I can't tell you because I get in trouble. But I have a major project I'm going to be doing. And I'm right now and everything I'm doing with it or, or what, I'm, what am I fixing? What am I solving? Please do that. That those are the things that I put in my resume about what I help with. You know, you'd be surprised. Something simple is like one of one of the things that I really was uh spearheaded was that we need a QA process for our analysts, you know, because we're running to the same issues. Let me see if it's a tree in here, are they doing stuff right? Let me get, you know, the feedback. So that's it. And also don't be scared to escalate when you need to if you don't understand oh, something. Yeah. 100%. The smallest alert could possibly tip the scale and have everybody up at 2 in the morning. And, you know, in his situation, he got brought in because some people messed up. And I think also the reason why I wasn't able to shadow with him a lot or anybody else, because we still were busy at the time. Mm-hmm. We were down all those bodies. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know how it is now. I, I recently talked to Pat, and he told me a little bit about that. But, um... Now, I'll say far as, you know, since you've really been at more of an MSS for a while. uh, Okay, somebody said I was breaking up. I don't know. I think it may be his end. Uh, Yeah, it's good on my side. Okay, cool. You know, did your uh, camera just go out? Uh, No, I'm still on. It's showing uh, black on my end. But anyways, we'll talk about, so you kind of really gave everybody a plan on how to get a SOC role, or you say breaking the cybersecurity, but I think it's honestly a niche path to do SOC because here's the thing. I say, and you can tell me if you agree with this, uh, would you say it takes a little bit of luck and hard work to break into cybersecurity? Yeah, 100%. Um, I think, like, for somebody to hire you, like, you might be the most skilled person ever, right? You might have, like, the best skills and everything. But 
they have to they have to like you like they have to like you're, they're gonna be working with you so they have to like you and you know want to work with you you might you might, at the same time like um you might be the least skilled person and still get the job so like if that if they like you more because of your personality and know that okay we can train you up you probably get hired but if somebody else has like the the top skills and like they just they just don't like them then they probably wouldn't hire them that's when that's where the luck comes in yeah cuz it's like cuz i've seen other people there that a lot of stuff and it's just not clicking for them and so i, I always tell people too sometimes everybody's path not going to be the same yeah you know uh, that's why I tell people to brand yourself and be as visible as possible Absolutely. because a lot of times, so what it does is, and listen, I'm giving you stuff straight from my book. When you have a presence on LinkedIn or you got nothing but videos where people can go back, they kind of see your personality. And, and if you're blogging, they see how you write. Uh, this guy's got a ton of blog material that I keep on telling him to make it official. So nobody can take it. Wink, wink. But, um, uh, <laughs> But those are things that, that help you because your manager is looking for a leader. Hey, I want to put you on this project. Can you do this? You know, I I, if I, I never asked, which I might ask one day, about like, how did I beat the people out for my new role? But I'm pretty sure it maybe it was some of the stuff I talked about. I talked about it briefly, but I went through a what four-hour interview process. And I'm going to just tell you guys, I wasn't as good as they when I started out. Um, granted I had experience, I did like help desk for two years and then not for, but I still really far as technical wise, wasn't as good as him. And that's the reason why, well, I really wasn't, when I was coming up, it wasn't so many, uh, it wasn't that many sock roles or security roles available. They started coming available a lot about 2017, 2018. But I also wasn't doing the best to highlight the stuff I knew. I just was doing a scattershot approach, which I advise. Um, like, even in 2018, that was a rough time. Like, I really, really, I didn't get enough feedback from what was going on. I had my own opinions of why I went so long without getting hired. Uh, but, you know, it, it was, you know, for a reason. It right. only made me better. Maybe I wouldn't have been as hungry and good in June of 2018 had I got hired like two weeks after I got laid off from McAfee. Wow. Yeah. That's definitely that briefly in like the last little podcast episode I did. Uh, I guess I got an email or something. I don't know. But um, but yeah, man. Uh, what's me? We want to touch on because I don't want to keep people here all day. Uh, they're in here watching. I know I've seen some questions. Uh, let's see. Uh, salute to Josh, man. Keep it techie, man. Y'all go subscribe to him. I think he just passed 9,000 subscribers. So y'all shout out to him. Y'all follow him. Uh, let's see. Emmanuel B says, how do I, how do you get the motivation and drive to learn when, you, when you're when you comfortable at your level and you feel like you know a lot? Um, that's interesting because I don't think I I don't know if I'm the best to answer that because I haven't gotten at that level yet. The only reason I haven't been studying super hard is because I life <laughs> has happened and uh, other things. But I plan to. I don't. This this is a field I know I can't get comfortable. Like we got stuff about crypto, blockchain, web 3.0, DeFi. All this crap is coming up, and it's finna shake up the world. So I got new stuff to learn about. So I can't just get, you know, like, you know, what is this? Today's threats is not yesterday's threats or something. You know, Fat Joe say today. Yeah. Probably so. I might put that on the shirt. Today's threats are not yesterday's threats. Y'all better not steal that. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, so I don't know. Do you have an answer for that about if you feel like you know a lot? Because I don't know. I think the wisest people know they know nothing at all. Yeah. I would say, like, for me, like, I... I... I've never felt comfortable like I like every like that and like that's gonna ha that's gonna be one of the reasons why I've had like I, I've still had like so much like progress in my career so far and why I've had like the amount of positions I've had like in the short time I've been in the field because I've never felt comfortable like I I I don't I never get to a point and I feel like um I I'm good 
here. Like I can, you know, I can, um, you know, become, I'm, I can, I'm good. Right. I, I feel like I'm, I'm always like, okay, this is great. Right. I already understand this stuff. Right. Okay. What's next? Like, what, what do I need to know next? Like what, what, where do I, where, where are the gaps in my knowledge? Right. So for example, right. When I got to my, when, when I got into you know, like my current position, um, like I was like, okay, so first month, first two, three months, you know, it was, it was, I was like, okay, I'm learning, I'm learning these things. I need to understand these things. And then four, four months, four and a half months, like, okay, I get it. Like I, this, I, I, I have my workflow. I know what's going on. Even if we get like new alerts, I can figure it out. Right. Because I understand that I understand the process. I understand the workflow. And that was when, that was when, um, that was when, um, I, I had the opportunity to interview for a senior position. Right. So like, um, uh, Pat was like, Hey, look, um, this where we have this new client coming up, like you should interview for it. I was like, okay, yeah, sure. Even though like I technically don't have the experience requirement for a senior position, like even in my career, like I'm, I am still like kind of, you know, entry level. Like if you would, you know, if you were to classify me by. No, no, <laughs> I like to object. You actually have a senior level skill set. So I don't base what you got the experience or whatever on based on years of like you've been in, I based on what I feel like you can do or right. no, feels a bad word. Me and should say, I know I based, you know, your skill set or your experience of based on what I know you can do. So I, right. you know, you, you definitely do all the stuff you're doing. There's nobody that I know. I mean, it's probably some other people, but nobody on that team has did that, that training. You had people on there. I'm not, I'll tell you after, but what they were trying to do, but no, you skill set already being a year in. You know, just like you know, Tay left us and he went and did a senior level role. You know, I started consulting. Like I feel like <laughs> that's probably the next thing you have to start doing is consulting. Dude's gonna be posting pictures everywhere and video. <laughs> Word. But yeah, so um, I interviewed for the position and um, I like. It was it was definitely a really like um like a really it was a really hard interview I would say like it was it was very long and hard but um even still like I um I came out successful even though I didn't get the senior position right but I I got pro promoted to the next stage of my uh of like my analyst level right so um but even still like if if not for certain things I wasn't able to kind of answer in the interview I very much well. Um, was able to was would have got into position um but the, but the, to, to circle back to the the bottom line it's like i just never feel comfortable where i'm at right and right now like i'm I'm at the point where okay i know where i'm going next and i know what i need to get there so i can't be comfortable uh knowing that so now i'm, I'm trying to so i haven't really put this out there yeah so this is my first time putting it. i'm trying to I'm, I'm actually working on transitioning to cloud security so I I know that I can be comfortable right where I'm at right now because I have a lot to learn about the cloud and if I want to be really good at the cloud I have I have to learn a lot so I just so like there's just never the 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 fact of being comfortable has just never been there and then motivation like there's so many things that motivate me um I'd say like number one, number one thing um like one of the mo one of one of the major motivations in this field and I'm, I'm not gonna lie or like you know be afraid to say it is is the money like you can make a lot of money in this field right because the better you are the better you're skilled the better the opportunity for you to make money right in this field like the higher you go the more skilled you have more skills you have the more knowledge you have the more potential you have to make money so like if you if you can like <laughs> See, we got somebody coming up real quick. I'm letting them on the stage. All right. Uh, hey, can you hear me? Yeah, we can yeah. hear you. How's it going, man? Hey, I'm doing good. How about you, man? I don't have a webcam Pretty on good. right now. <laughs> That's cool. Um, I said I was going to eventually try to do this in the, in the future to kind of interact with people more. Easier way to do, like, maybe some quick questions people have while they're watching. Mm -hmm. Um and more people might try to hit the link because I think I'm probably going to dead this at like 8.30 mm -hmm. so I can, you know, relieve my girl with the kids. But, yeah, man, uh, got any questions for us while, you, while you're up here? Yeah. Or anything you just want to talk about? I guess I can I can pull a few out. Um, I guess I've been watching both of you guys actually here for the last, like, maybe month and a half to two months, actually. Um, just been trying to penetrate through the uh, entry-level cybersecurity world. 
and I can tell you this even from experience, it's not it's not easy. <laughs> yeah, um, it's, not. it's it's not that easy, and uh, you know it's kind of humbling trying to when you see how hard it is to get in. And um, I actually had to work my way around it for the meanwhile while I still learn more. Um, I just recently switched switched from a level two desktop technician role, it was mostly hardware, and now I'm a little going up to engineer role. I'm actually starting here in a couple of days. Um, so I'll just be supporting nice. a s- small team of people. And I think the biggest motivation was honestly just watching you guys. Um, it's, I know it's not anything related towards cybersecurity, but you know, just stepping up that ladder, it's been really great. And I'd like to thank both you guys for that. <laughs> um, Thanks, man. Uh, I like to interject though. Um, I like to tell everybody who's doing help desk, devs, desktop support service desk that there are some uh cybersecurity related things that you are doing in your role you just have to mm-hmm. highlight and identify them uh, mm-hmm. will you be supporting a certain uh system or anything like that uh it's just uh from my understanding it's just an agency company um they have it's a SaaS platform they just provide support to their clients that use them and I'm going to be honest with you. I really don't know what the day-to-day is going to be like. They didn't really do a great job of explaining that. So I'm <laughs> kind of walking in blinded. <laughs> I know that's kind of gotcha. scary, but um, I've been I'm kind of used to it. I'm kind of used to it, though. <laughs> um, last, last company I worked at was a real estate company, so they're not really too involved in the technology world. So it was kind of – I was having a lot of issues there, so I, I was I had to move, man. <laughs> like and, and and this is just me talking i feel like two industries that are about to probably get invested a little bit more in cybersecurity is real estate like anything with law like lawyers mm. type of things i say it with the real estate because you know now we're moving to metaverse and virtual land i'm pretty sure real you know big firms are going to be trying to buy that and i i just foresee a whole bunch of things transpiring that tells me to keep on telling people hey get in the tech you know mm-hmm. however way you got to do it get in there and you'll eventually find your own but um number two that if you were working on a specific platform like you said it was a SaaS uh, company i was mm-hmm. like it's a you know don't be uh don't be scared to like niche down into a uh specific software because that can be an avenue into something else. Um, I've, I've, uh, it could be a software that a lot of people don't use, which makes it easier for you because you'll be highly coveted with supply and demand. It's like, oh, we're looking for somebody who knows how to use so-and-so. Um, hmm. Mary talks about it all the time. Shout out to Mary. If if you do want to go into, I'm talking to people, the viewers, a nice boot camp, you know, um, my tech best friend, uh, Mary has it down packed with that. But hmm. Yeah, I would say that. Also, just look into different um, softwares you can possibly, you know, maybe your company might pay for some training and then you can probably niche down to something and then probably that'd be your way out. Uh, it's, it's always a way. It's just, you know, you got to attack it from a different angle. Mm-hmm. And I totally agree. Um, I think so. One thing that we're going to be using day to day is um, Jamf, I believe. And that was something that I already had knowledge of previously. And, and I think if you look at it now, not that many people in the field have Jamf knowledge. Um, it's just what is one that? Of those new... Jamf is like a, ma- a management tool. Just like, like MDM tool? Set... Yeah, MDM tool so you can set policies, make sure people don't mess anything up too much. <laughs> nice. Um, so, so that could potentially, if you got a cert or something in that, you might can just, because honestly, I tell people, it's really do cybersecurity work too, um, even mm-hmm. though their title says it's admin. I mean, you can learn about that some more on your free time or, or figure out how a way if y'all had to some crap, you know, it's, I, I would say networking is probably the best thing you could do right now in your position. Um, mm. It's a network because you're already technical doing engineering stuff mm. and you may want to be a type of security engineer where you actually work on the platform. Mm. So there's many ways to skin a cat. So that's just my advice for you. You know, just keep your head up. Uh, it took me what, two and a half year really from 2013 to 2017 so it, it took me a while to finally get, get but I, I finally got there so i just say keep at it and you'll get there yeah definitely uh i try to take as much as i could with my position just we used insight vm and 
Kaseya, which, you know, take what you will with that. Um, but <laughs> a lot, the day to day, um, I tried really hard. It, it, I was known as the cybersecurity guy, even though I didn't have any search for anything, but anything security wise, that my boss will come straight to me no matter what it was. So it's definitely one of my favorite things to do. And I, I thank you guys for putting me down on that path or at least trying to get down on that path. <laughs> yeah, man. Anytime, you know, uh, that's, I mean, that's what some, I probably, I forgot to ask today. I mean, I think I started my channel just because I like talking about this stuff and I've always been trying to help people. Of course I do do my coaching stuff. Where I get paid for it, but it's not anything outrageous. It's more so just time. Mm -hmm. uh, I take time out of my day to help you. So it's really more so about that, but the, you know, the investment you get from it is priceless, mm -hmm. but the fact that, I don't know. It's just crazy. Like the reach of YouTube is crazy. Like I've looked at my analytics. I looked at my podcast analytics, like all different type of people, you know, be or message you like on LinkedIn or something and say, Hey man, just want to, you know, shout you out. They help me get a job or something like that. So that's some of the best news you can get on a, on a day just because like, well, at least I'm making an impact. I don't care if it's a thousand people. At one, I helped out. Of course. And I think you mentioned it on a video. Are you in like the Dallas area? Yeah, or both, you moved over? Dallas, both you guys. Yeah, yeah same here. Yeah, w. I'm in Dallas. I'm in Dallas too. So it, I think it's like a very local reach. It's kind of crazy that down the street, it's, someone's just like you, you know, and it's, it's just crazy. Yeah, and man. Also, um, it's come up, becoming a hotbed out here mm -hmm. um, for, for jobs, man. So uh, I, and I'm gonna do a video on this, but I think an issue that some people don't even know is they don't know how to. And when I say search for jobs, they don't know how to decipher because they wouldn't know because they're not in the field. They don't know how to mm -hmm. decipher what's an actual entry level type of job opposed to a mid level senior level role. Mm -hmm. It's kind of I gave examples in an ebook of like, oh, this is entry level, this isn't for that reason so people can kind of know like i kind of base it off of like stuff you won't know unless you actually work somewhere mm -hmm. it's hard to get you know free training on everything like even like i got a video i plan to do i got the stuff written out but i just gotta do some other crap with it about edrs mm -hmm. it's so hard to get your hands on a edr solution to lab with but what you can do and i did it i just have to do set up some vms i was able to get a free trial of like Microsoft Defender. So I'm mm -hmm. going to set it up in a, in a VM and just start doing crap in there or maybe let it stay open and let day hack it or some crap and <laughs> see what Defender does. I'm trying to record it and talk about it in a video. Um, a lot of companies are going to Microsoft Defender. So I don't know if you probably can get some search for it too. So I would say look up Microsoft Defender. Mm -hmm. and yeah, You can play with it in Azure and, and also right. like Azure Sentinel too. Yeah, and uh, oh, what's his name? Josh, uh, Josh something Josh, with an M. Yeah, Metacore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just came across his profile like a couple of weeks ago. Hopefully, uh, me and him can collab. But I seen that he set up Sentinel for a video, and that was cool because I feel like Sentinel is going to be something that's going to eventually get some good market share, just like Azure is clawing away at AWS. Um, but yeah, I definitely think you know those are some things that on a resume because. Um, if you say something about EDR, uh, most people that are coming in, new people don't know what EDR is. I mean, I did a, if you, right now, if you don't follow me on Instagram, you can check out my Instagram and I actually did like a post on like, what is an EDR? What is it made for? What are the top five EDRs? What are my favorites? Uh, so that's good. Emerging EDR would be Sentinel One as well. Now Sentinel One's training and stuff is super expensive. So, and then you might not be able to even do it unless you work for a company, but you can always research it and figure out what it was to use machine learning, AI, just like CrowdStrike, uh, but it's a little different. Uh, yeah, so I said uh, Elastic EDR is free. That's true. I actually just set it up recently. You can, yeah, Elastic, if you set up an Elastic environment, you can, um, you can add the, but, the plugin. So here's my thing with it, though. Uh, is it, I don't see it a lot on job descriptions. Or know a lot of companies that use it. Yeah, but I think like if, now if I could be wrong. I haven't actually searched for it. I may search for Elastic EDR one day and see. I could yeah. be wrong. Um, but so I'll try to go back and search for that. 
if it's for eleven though, like the truth, the truth is like most EDRs have like pretty much the same capabilities. It's just like they some of them have like maybe like faster engines or are like cloud natives or something like that. But typically the EDRs function is pretty much the same. Some might have like deeper capabilities, but if you understand how to use the EDR like from a lab perspective, just knowing how to like you know look at processes or process information, uh, look at like hashes or look at um like services or network connections or um like disk changes all of that just having that having knowing how to do that maybe in the lab and then um just applying that knowledge to whatever edr you find yourself using it's just it's gonna be good because all you have to do is just in truth be told even if you've never used the edr before you can literally be trained on that like i like when i got my first sock job i had never used the edr and um I'm, and i was able to get trained on how to use the edr there and from there on i i just kind of picked up how to use edrs generally um, and some of the some sometimes the EDRs also have um, like their training. So like they have like like you know like CrowdStrike has CrowdStrike University, where you can get like you know trainings on how to use CrowdStrike. Tenium has training too. So um, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know what? It's hard. It's hard to get access to CrowdStrike University outside yeah. of being with a company. Because yeah. I was looking at that, but you would be able to take the certs. Uh, they might have some stuff on Udemy or somewhere you find it. But like CCFA, CCFR are not hard. Matter of fact. I had to check my OneNote. I had to check my OneNote because I think I have some stuff on the CCFR as far as like some, some questions. It's pretty, if you know a little bit about like incident response or something like that, like it's pretty simple. Like it, it really is for the CCFR. CCFA, simple too, but it's more so geared towards handling stuff in CrowdStrike. Yeah. Um, let me get back to some of these questions real quick and, uh, and then we're going to end up letting uh, everybody go. Let's see. Okay. I've been answering some questions in the chat. Somebody said, yes, yeah, so Black Ant said, y'all got it good in Dallas. Houston is compared. No, nah, Dallas is like right under Austin when it comes to like tech yes. jobs out here. Houston yes. actually is uh, the least competitive when it comes to this because I never saw that many security jobs in Houston when I was uh, yes. looking years ago. And a lot of the companies are also based here. There's a lot of like tech companies that are based here in Dallas too. Right. Uh Lola Lee said, what's an entry-level SOC salary? Like they said, it really depends. I say average. I'll say average may be around between 65 and 75 because some of my clients, like in the area, I think their first offer was like 60-something, and I think that was around average, I think, for them. And they got some stock options and some other stuff on the back end, so it wasn't too bad. Oh, shout out to my my cousin Tony. Hey man, hadn't heard from you in a while. Want to tell you on camera, I love you, man. That's the ball Nabaya in the chat for those that want to know. Uh, let's see. I actually interviewed at AWS for a cloud associate earlier this year, and I got body on the last round. Yeah, I haven't did anything Fang related. One day I might apply to a Fang job to see how to experiences and i could probably chronicle it uh you know it's pretty cool i know i'm in fintech now i remember my ey interview it wasn't super hard i did that like last year last february before everything shut down it wasn't hard but i did mess up let me tell you why days right about uh networking because i was able to help my friend with his interview with ey <laughs> i was a four hour interview for different people first interview the guy was like hey uh can you drop me a network I hadn't had to draw a network in years. I messed up on how the DMZ looked and everything. I was like, I knew I bummed that part, that portion of it. Everything else I did good on. But the network part of just drawing, you know, the actual network topology, I did bad at. Uh, yeah. So just remember that. Uh, yeah, that's right, OMG Mamba, XDR. I know uh, my last company, which, you know, I'm going to say Optif, and um, they're really – doing a lot with xdr now as well so you're right about that that's a uh, huge so look at the xdr roles um you got i've been telling everybody if you're new coming in try to research soar um i don't know if they have any open source stuff all this stuff i plan to do videos on guys to help you guys out uh, let's see side hustles and security yeah yeah he said cut uh, I uh, name on camera Emmanuel um, because I try to not let people know where I'm at until I'm either gone or whatever because they are 
these companies in that sector are very particular what you do outside of work. So I don't. But if you want to be honest, I had uh, one interview and I actually detailed this. Uh, I had a, what I learned from it's either in my I quit my job video or what I learned from interviewing one of those videos. I've already kind of detailed this, but uh, pretty much it was simple. I had one interview with somebody that went good. Um, I could tell it went good. Just had a good good flow going on personalities. And then the next one was like a four hour interview. And it was funny because I was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it was pretty cool. Nobody asked me anything outlandish. Uh, it was funny because, like I said, my experience wasn't directly on the other side with incident response. And I just gave my answers and highlighted like my strong points and stuff I did and stuff I so you know have did at the last company. And stuff went by fast. So my recruiter was like, "Yeah, man, uh, they like you." You know, they're finna try to do this and that. And so they're going to end up offering you. And they did. And that background check. So that's why it took me so long to start because they had, they knew from a long back in, I want to say that was like July or something when I, when I talked to them. So they knew back then that I was talking to them. And so I didn't start till November 4th or something like that. Yeah. I remember uh, I kept like asking like almost like every week. And let's see. Also, for people that's in the Dallas area or anybody want to fly, Day doesn't know because um, he hasn't been on Twitter. We are and we are planning on doing like a DFW Tech Meetup. We're shooting for right now March of 2022, uh, springtime when it's a little bit. So, if you want to, we'll have more info, but just connect with me and get on Twitter. We'll be probably talking about it on Twitter. Now, definitely, we want to make it like a nice networking event, and maybe we can make it a thing that occurs yearly. We got its own little hub, kind of like uh, what I think Baltimore and all of them have their own thing uh, out there. So that's pretty much what we're trying to do. Uh, I don't want to hold the mic long. I don't know if anybody else wants to uh, talk or say anything before I, I let the people... Enjoy that. What's going on? You got anything to add, man? Uh, no. I got you tagged in the video. Yeah. So I've never, like, I mean, just, if anyone has any, like, more questions or anything, so, like, you know, reach out. Um, my Discord, actually, so I took that back. So, like, get on my Discord, um, because I, I really, um, I, I try to, like, I'm going to answer questions in the Discord and help people out. Um, I tend to, like, shy away from, like, personal messages um, recently because, like, it's just, like, counterintuitive for me because, like, I just help more people um, with the Discord. So definitely check out my, if you look at my my YouTube, uh, in my uh, description, you see, like, the link to my Discord. So definitely join my Discord and ask questions in the Discord, not private messages because I probably wouldn't reply. Um, but, yeah, um, yeah, that's it for me. So check this out, guys. What I'm going to do real quick, if you're in the stream and you want to join, if you want to join my Slack space, I'm going to post a link right now. Oh, yeah, I should do my Discord, too. So I have a Slack. I just posted a link. Uh, I'm probably going to loop this and let you guys, you know, click on it. But uh, description, I'm trying to get that community built up. But I appreciate everybody for tuning in. It's been another one, man. Thank everybody. I got some more heat on the way. Y'all go follow Day Cyberwalks. He's he's the man. He's gonna be at like thirty thousand subs next year. Uh, so y'all know what it is, man. But you know, until next time, let's get textual. Hey, thanks for having me, bro.